Greetings, Legionnaires! Today I bring you my Tales from Sea of Thieves, a title presenting you with the opportunity to pillage and voyage to your heart's content. However, will the game make a lasting impression, or is it better off being sent down to Davy Jones' locker? I'll tell you all that and more in my tactical report, replete with highlights and shortcomings of this nautical narrative. After selecting one of a few stock pirate skins, you are released and allowed to explore at your leisure. Questing comes in three main varieties, treasure hunting, assassinations, and delivery missions. Prowling the seas for booty, bounties, and bartered goods will earn you gold along with reputation in one of the guilds. High reputation allows you to access and purchase guild-specific items that function more so cosmetically rather than practically. During your voyages, you'll fight skeletons and come across real-world players with their own agendas. It rests upon you to decide if you would rather engage them in mortal combat or avoid them entirely. Let's put our best peg leg forward, as we always do, and discuss the strengths of the game. The striking and vibrant graphical presentation is ever-present. A mixture of cartoonish flair and glowing natural beauty make each journey visually appetizing. This is only bolstered by a whimsical musical score that picks up when the flintlocks start firing or when you and your crew decide to start a maritime musical. This game can be played alone, but truly comes to life with a full crew. When played by yourself or with one friend, you have access to a sloop, which is a smaller vessel capable of higher maneuverability. However, when you have two or three fellow scallywags by your side, Sea of Thieves shines the brightest, angling and correctly setting the sails of your massive galleon, coordinating who fires cannons and who patches up the ship, and organizing treasure tracking can lead to many jolly misadventures. Unfortunately, Sea of Thieves is plagued with many detrimental barnacles. The combat on both land and at sea is pretty lackluster and unrefined. Sword swings feel clunky, pistols are unruly, and learning the correct path of cannon shock can lead to many frustrating moments. Quests feel underdeveloped too, with little to no variation in execution. Collecting treasure the first time feels exciting, but by the tenth time you dig up a sand-encrusted chest and sell it for gold, it starts to lose its sheen. Killing skeletons and delivering goods fall prey to the same tedium. All this legwork leads to very little too, as cosmetic items seem to be the only goal one is working toward. The overall implementation of these aspects in the game feels bare bones. The title feels so underprepared and lifeless at times, it makes it difficult to soldier on. This is only exacerbated by the seasickness the game seems intent on making you feel. Sea of Thieves has a lot of squandered potential. Playing with friends is an absolute must to extract any modicum of enjoyment from this ho-hum journey. While the overall visual and musical presentations are fantastic, the soulless monotony of the predictable quests and unrefined battle system drag it to dark depths. Legionnaires, agree with my review? Let me know in the comments below. Also, be sure to check out the Critical Podcast where we'll discuss this game at length. If you want to support the show, like and subscribe for more. Feeling extra generous? Then share this with a friend or visit us on patreon.com slash critical reviews to fund our glorious campaign. Thanks for stopping by, and just remember to adapt and overcome.